2,218 to 2 at the end of December. Well, what's the difference between Canadian capitalists and American capitalists? Well, that, that, that we could go on to a whole hour long speech. <laughs> uh, there is some difference, and, but it has to do a lot with how you acquire the tax revenue and stuff like that. But um, my last few books, Mel Herring's last few books, were published by McClellan and Stewart. And I don't know if you heard about this because the good old Vancouver Sun didn't even mention it, to the best of my knowledge. I phoned the literary editor there, and she she like she's never heard of McClellan and Stewart, the biggest <laughs> publishing company in Canada, the most iconic company, the company that started uh, uh, Leonard Cohen, a company that started Pierre Burton, the company that started. Uh, our, our great women authors in this country. Margaret Atwood. Margaret Atwood, exactly, exactly. And, uh, and that's, that's now owned by an American-German publishing company. And uh, here's a letter I wrote my publisher. I'm just going to read you part of it uh, to the editor-in-chief, Doug Pepper. Doug, why didn't you tell me that McClellan and Stewart was about to be sold to Americans and Germans? Did you ever think for a moment that I would want to have my next book published by either? Uh, or that I would want to be the book printed in the United States because Brad Martin, the president of, uh, of uh, the Random House of Canada, <coughs> bragged about the net benefit to Canadians because from now on, McClellan and Stewart books would be printed in the United States. He actually bragged about that as a benefit to Canada. And I went on to say, um, you're not going to like what I have to say about this scurrilous, secretive deal in my new book. The whole pack of you, including the University of Toronto, who had something to do with this, uh, should be ashamed of yourselves. They should be. Yeah. Um, this is a very important event because this is the biggest publishing company that we've had in this country. Lots of people in the Vancouver area were published by McClellan and Stewart. And what, what do you think is going to happen from now on? Do you think many of them are going to find uh, Random House down in the States are anxious to be their publisher? You, I did a, did a survey many years ago because I was rather curious. And I, I survey showed that about... Um, Five times as many books about Canada and by Canadians were published by the smaller Canadian publishing companies than by the big American conglomerates that were coming into this country. Um, so I'm, I'm very upset about this. I uh, signed a contract to do my next book, which would be called The Five Things That Canadians Must Do If They Want to uh, Reclaim Our Country. And it's going to be one of my best books. <laughs> As of right now, I do not have a publisher. So I'm going to have to scramble around and talk to other publishers to see if we can get them uh, interested. Ruth, Ruth is here. Ruth yeah, is I'll here. publish it. My spare time. <laughs> what's, uh, what's happening in this country? Uh, are many Canadian companies being taken over? Well, I just, I just went to Industry Canada's website and brought you a little list from... Uh, Partial list from uh, December alone. The January postings weren't ready, but here's some of the takeovers. Uh, big oil and gas company in Calgary taken over by Chinese. Uh, a uh, heavy duty gripping company in Montreal taken over by Americans. A, uh, can't read. Another big company in Montreal taken over by Americans. Uh, a uh, big company in Montreal taken over by British. A big company in uh, Calgary taken over by some investors in Luxembourg. Uh, and I go down, United States, Australia, uh, United States, uh, St. Catharines, Ontario, Brazil, United States, United States, United States, uh, Germany. Every country that you can think of is taking over Canadian businesses. Uh, how do you ever expect 
you know, how, how do you ever expect to get anywhere close to full employment if we continue to allow this to happen? Because when they take over their companies, they do what Caterpillar just did. This disgraceful, terrible action by Caterpillar closing down this Canadian plant. By the way, a Canadian plant that had just received $5 million from our friend, uh, Mr. Harper. Mr. Harper, exactly. Don't bring to mind. They, uh, they, uh, it was shameful. They, oh, they said to the, said to the workers, all right, well, we'll consider keeping this plant open here, but you're just going to have to take a small wage cut. What was the wage cut? 50%. Can you imagine? 50%. Uh, and their hourly wage cut, and the, the workers said, are you nuts? These workers, some of them, had worked at this locomotive co uh, company for uh, 20, 30 years, and they want them to take, and, and oh, by the way, uh, Caterpillar uh, only made an all-time record profit last year. So they want to move it back to the United States, and uh, this is typical of what they do. They take over a Canadian company and they move the research and development back there, they move the advertising back there to the states, they move the insurance back there to the states. And is it any wonder that we've got this scandalously high rate of uh, unemployment in this country? It's terrible. Yeah. What happened to the five million? What happened to the five million? <laughs> they kept it, of course. They kept it, of course they did. Anyway, I've got page, ladies and gentlemen, I've got page after page after page of listing of Canadian companies that are, of every, you, you mentioned the kind of Canadian company that's in these pages, and that's one month of Canadian takeovers. One single month. And if you ever... are taking over our non-profits, too. Our non-profits? Yeah. They're taking over our non-profits, too. Okay, well... I wanted to speak briefly about, about Burrard Inlet. Kinder Morton's plans, and I, I guarantee you, not 10% of the people in Vancouver know about this, but Kinder Morgan's plans are to quietly double the size of their pipeline from Edmonton to Vancouver to Burrard Inlet. And uh, instead of shipping 350,000 barrels a day out of Burrard Inlet, through the Narrows, they're going to ship uh, 700,000 barrels a day if they're allowed to do so. Haven't they already been given permission to do it? No, they haven't. But the answer is, I ask once more, once more where is Gregor Robertson on this? We, we should go, all of us, together. We should go to Gregor Robertson's office and tell him, Gregor Robertson, you, sir, are not going to be mayor of the city after the next election if you allow that uh, those plans by Kinder Morgan to go He's through. He's the mayor of Vancouver. He's not the mayor of Port Moody or Port Coquitlam. Oh, well, I have news for you. The, 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 uh, the ships are going to go through the heart of uh, Vancouver. It's, uh, it's something that, that shouldn't be allowed, and, and I can't think of any other city would allow this to happen. And you know who could stop it? We can. All of us can. Every one of us. Yes, we can. We can go to his office and really confront him and say, Gregor, I'm sorry. You don't deserve to be mayor of the city if you allow that project to go ahead. Okay, I'm almost finished here, and then I, I, I would really very much welcome a question and answer period. Uh, the, my next book, as I said, is going to be called Five Things Canadians Must Do If We Want to Save Our Country. Peter Newman said in his last book that a few more years of Stephen Harper, and we're going to have to change the name of our country. Uh, the title of Lawrence Martin's excellent recent book was Harperland. So it seems to me those two statements go well together. I don't think we can take back Canada unless we get much more active politically. 
the sad thing about this country, there's wonderful, wonderful organizations like Suzuki's organization and, and the Council of Canadians and many, many organizations like that and Occupy them. And uh, I bet you not 20% of them belong to any political party. So who does, who does that leave the control of political and policy making in, in Canada up to? It leaves it up to people who have a vested interest, people who are interested in their own good fortune, people who really don't care. Uh, I, like it boggles my mind, you know I'm recently in Vancouver, I've just lived here only about four years, and I find it impossible to understand that for eight years in a row you people have allowed the highest levels of child poverty anywhere in Canada. How could you allow that? I don't understand it. It, it, means you've got, it means you've got lousy politicians. It means you've got lousy political leadership. And, and it means that if you want to have better results than that, you must make sure that you get involved in one way or another. I don't care what party it is that make any difference to me. Get involved and begin to make this a much more democratic, more egalitarian, and fairer country than it is at the present time. I don't think so. Um,